Okay, going on to 4.2. So we're going to talk more about congruent uh, figures and congruent triangles. And remember, I kind of explained that in 4.1 a little bit. So congruent figures are two geometric figures that have exactly the same size and shape. So exactly the same size and shape. When two figures are congruent, all pairs of corresponding sides and corresponding angles are also congruent. So all their side lengths are equal on the two figures, and all their angle measures are equal on the two figures. Um, corresponding parts is a pair of sides um, or angles that have the same relative position um, in two congruent similar or yeah similar figures. So let's say I draw this triangle, and then I draw this triangle. And I say that these two triangles are congruent, okay? What that means is that this side is congruent to this side, this side is congruent to this side, and then this side is congruent to this side. That means that this side and this side that both have three markings are corresponding. The one marking side is corresponding, and then the two marking sides are also corresponding. That also means that this angle corresponds to this angle, and they are equal. This angle corresponds to this angle, and they are equal. And lastly, this angle corresponds to this angle, and those two are also equal. Okay? Um, now, this triangle could be turned and look like that instead of looking like this. That still means that I would have to find the matching side. So this one would be the 3. This one would be the 2. This is the 1, the shortest. This angle would match up with that angle. This little two angle would match up with this angle, and then this would be my three angle. Okay, so you can turn it, and it's fine. We still have corresponding sides. You have to figure out what matches up with one another. Third angle's theorem states that if two angles in one triangle are congruent to two angles in, the in another triangle, that makes the third angle also congruent. So if this were 40, and this is 40 to make it equal, that means that this is 40 and this is 40. That's 80 degrees of the 180, so that leaves that with 100. Again, 80 degrees of the 180, so that leaves that with 100. Those, in turn, have to be congruent. And then we think back to our proofs a little bit. Reflex is symmetric transitive. So um, for any triangle ABC, triangle ABC is congruent to itself. Symmetric, if I have two triangles that are congruent, like this one's congruent to this, I can flip that around and say that this one's congruent to this. And then transitive property, if this is congruent to this, and this is congruent to this, that means I take out what they share, and I say this is congruent to this one, okay? So in the diagram, triangle TJM is congruent to triangle PSH. Now, if you notice, they have flipped this around. If it is easier for you to take this triangle out and flip it around so it looks like the other one and put the correct lettering in the correct spot. P to S is 5, so this is 5. Angle S is 48. You can do that, okay? And then it may make it easier to match up. But what I recommend is you using this statement because they put it in the correct order. And anytime you make this congruency statement, you have to put it in the correct order yourself too. But what this means is that angle T has to match up with angle P and that angle J would have to match up with angle H and that angle M would have to match up with angle S. It also means that T to J matches up with P to S. J to M matches up with H to S. T to M matches up with P to S. And you have to go in the correct order. So this one is saying angle P is congruent to angle, so P is the first letter, so it would be congruent to the first letter here, which is T. J to M, J to the M, J is the second letter, M is the third letter, so I have to go second, third. So that would be H, S. Now, the measure of angle M, this is different. They don't want an angle name. They want the actual measurement. The measure of angle M, well, M matches up with S. So I have to come down here and find S is 48 degrees. So the measure of angle M would also be 48 degrees. The measure of angle P so angle P is right here. P matches up with T. T is right here. So those would be equal. So that would be 73 degrees. Now, if you notice, if I wanted what it matched up with, the corresponding side, it would have a line and a congruent symbol. But if I want how big it is or how long it is, they just write M to T equals, and then that's what they want distance. 
So M to T. M is the last letter. T is the first letter. So it would match up with S to P. That's not what they're wanting. They're wanting to know how long S to P and M to T are. Well, S to P is 5. That means M to T would also be 5. Triangle HPS. So I go up to this. HPS. Second, first, third letter. So this would have to match up with congruent to second, first, third letter. And then that's how we match all that up correctly. Uh, next, write a congruent statement for any figure that can be proven congruent. Explain your reasoning. So to be proven congruent, we have to have three sides and three angles. So essentially, you need six things in order to prove something congruent. Three sides and three angles. So here we have a matching angle to an angle, a matching angle to an angle. By third angle's theorem, that means that this angle is congruent to this angle. This side congruent to this side, this side congruent to this side, and this side is congruent to itself by reflexive, right? So that means I have three sides that are congruent to three sides, and I have three angles here that are congruent to three angles here. So I'm going to take this first triangle, which is this guy right here, and I'm going to just write it down, any order. I'm going to say D to E to G. Now, the important part is when I make this congruency statement, I have to match it up con correctly. So I have to figure out what D matches up with. D is the right angle, so it matches up with F. Okay? I went D to E. D to E is my two-line segment. So F is where we're starting, and we want the two-line segment. So that would be this one, so that goes F to G. So that means E matches up with G. And then I go around F to G back over to E has to be the third one. Next one, I have one, two, three angles with one, two, three angles. So those three angles match up. Then I have one marking and these are two markings. These may look similar or congruent, but they are actually not congruent. They are what we call similar because these are each one markings, which would mean that these would each have to be one marking and they're not. So this is, these are not congruent. Next one, we have one and one, we have two and two, and then this middle piece is congruent to itself by reflexive. So we have all three sides. Then we have arc and arc. This is 90 degrees. By definition, this would also have to be 90 degrees because it's a 180 segment. So we have those two angles, and by third angle's theorem, that means that this angle is congruent to this angle. So these two triangles are congruent. So remember, I'm going to pick the top triangle. I'm just going to go in one in a random order. I'm going to go X to Y to W. X is my one arc, so I pick my one arc on this one, which is Z. It goes X to Y. Y is a 90 degree, so this would be Z to Y, 90 degree, and then that means it goes back up to W. Write the value of X. Well, this is congruent to this by markings. We know that these three angles make 180, so I do 180 minus that 90 degree angle minus 65. Um, and that gives me, I think, 25, right? So x equals 25. Here, this is 70. Yes, double arc, double arc. And so now those 3 add up to 180. So 60 plus 70 plus 2x equals 180. 60 and 70 make 130. Plus 2x equals 180. Subtract 130, so I get 2x equals 50. So I get x equals 25. Given that A to B to C is congruent to D to E to F, find the values of X and Y. Um, A to B to C, D to E to F. So this is 42, because B and E match up, because they're both the middle letter. So now I can do 3Y plus 42 plus 87 equals 180. And then I do 180 minus 42 and minus 87. So I get 3y equals 51, so y equals 17. Um, <clears throat> the other one, we know that 5x plus 2, d, matches up with a, so 87 would equal 5x plus 2. I subtract 2 from both sides, so I get 85 equals 5x. Divide by 5, and I get x equals 17. So they are both 17. Given that triangle H to J to K is congruent to 
t to r to s, find the values of a and b. Go ahead and pause me. Complete this and unpause me when you're done. Um, h matches up with t, so I'd have 51 equals 6a minus 3. So I'm going to add 3 to both sides, so I get 54 equals 6a. So a equals 9, because I did divide by 6 on both sides. And then b, in order to find b, I know that this is 83 up here, because r and j match up. So I'm going to do 7b minus 10 plus 83 plus 51 equals 180. So I'm going to do 180 plus 10, because I moved that over by adding, minus 83, because I had minus to move it over there, minus 51, because I had minus this 51 to go over there. And I get 7b equals 56, divide by 7, and I get b equals 8. All right. <clears throat> I want for you to pause me, and I want you to try 14, 15, and 16 on your own. I'm going to pause also. I'm going to complete those, and then I will talk through them. 